Have you ever noticed how tickling is both hilarious and kind of horrible at the same time? Someone pokes your ribs, your body bursts into laughter, but deep down, you're not actually enjoying it. In fact, after a few seconds, you desperately want it to stop. Tickling is like nature's prank, funny, involuntary, and a little bit cruel. So what's going on here? Why would evolution give us something that makes us laugh and suffer simultaneously? And why can't we tickle ourselves? Welcome to the Tickling Paradox. Let's start with the basics. Tickling comes in two flavors. The first one is called kinismesis. It's that light, feathery sensation, like when a bug crawls across your skin or a strand of hair brushes your neck. It's irritating, not funny. You don't laugh, you swat it away. It's your body's built-in insect alert system. The second is gargalesis. That's the deep belly laugh kind of tickling, usually triggered when someone digs into your ribs, neck, or armpits. This is the one kids use as a weapon on their siblings, the one that makes you laugh uncontrollably while also begging for mercy. So here's the paradox. Tickling can make you laugh harder than a comedy special, yet you wouldn't exactly call it fun. Scientists have been fascinated by this contradiction for centuries. Even Aristotle wrote about it, wondering why we laugh when touched in certain ways. Fast forward to modern neuroscience, and the mystery is still not fully solved. But we do know this. Tickling hijacks two different systems in your brain at the same time. One is the somatosensory system, the part that processes touch. The other is the hypothalamus, a region linked to threat detection and defense. That's why tickling feels like both a playful game and a mini attack. Your body is confused. It's like getting prank called by your own nervous system. Now here's another twist. You can't tickle yourself. Go ahead, try running your own fingers across your ribs. Nothing. Your brain knows it's you, so it cancels the surprise. It's like trying to jump scare yourself in the mirror. It just doesn't work. That's because the brain has a clever prediction system. When you move, your motor cortex sends a copy of the movement command, called an POC efference copy, to your sensory areas. Basically, your brain tells itself, Hey, I'm about to touch my ribs, so don't overreact. Tickling only works when there's uncertainty. When the touch is unpredictable, your body lights up in confusion. Which is why other people can reduce you to helpless laughter. But you can't do it to yourself. This makes tickling a deeply social phenomenon. Think about it. Tickling usually happens between people who are close. Parents and children, siblings, romantic partners, best friends. You don't let strangers pin you down and tickle you. That would be terrifying. Evolutionary psychologists think this might be the real point of tickling. It's a bonding tool. A way to build trust, attachment, and playful connection. In fact, studies show that tickling games between parents and kids can strengthen emotional ties. The laughter signals safety, even though the body is in a state of mock alarm. It's like the brain is rehearsing danger in a safe environment, learning how to cope with surprise and stress. In other words, tickling is practice for life's unpredictability. Like a fire drill for your nervous system, except with more giggling and fewer evacuation plans. But there's a darker side. Tickling has also been used historically as a form of torture. In ancient China, prisoners were strapped down and tickled relentlessly. No scars, no blood, but unbearable suffering. Even Roman texts mention tickle torture as a punishment. If you've ever been tickled too long, you know how quickly laughter turns into panic. The helplessness, the loss of control, it can feel suffocating. This duality makes tickling almost unique. The same stimulus can be bonding or brutal depending on context. Play or punishment? Love or cruelty? It all depends on whether you trust the person doing it. Now let's zoom out for a moment. Why does laughter, of all things, get wired into this? Normally we laugh when something is funny, surprising, or socially contagious. But laughter during tickling isn't about humor, it's reflexive. Your body is laughing without your permission. One theory is that laughter here is a kind of submission signal. It tells the tickler, okay, you win, I'm harmless. A way to diffuse tension and avoid escalation. Almost like how some animals roll over to show their belly, signaling surrender. 
so tickling laughter might not mean joy. It could just be your nervous system waving a little white flag. This also explains why kids are so into tickling games. Children laugh more easily and more often than adults, and they use laughter as a key tool for building social bonds. Tickling fits right into that. It's cheap, physical, and guaranteed to make someone squeal. But notice how as we grow older, tickling tends to fade out of our social toolkit. Adults rarely tickle each other, unless in very specific, intimate contexts. For most of us, it's something we outgrow. Maybe because as adults, we prefer bonding rituals that don't involve feeling temporarily tortured. Still, the paradox remains. Tickling is one of the few sensations that sits right on the edge of pleasure and pain. It makes us laugh while making us uncomfortable. It bonds us while making us want to escape. It's silly and primal, playful and cruel. And maybe that's the real fascination. Tickling reveals just how blurry the line is between joy and discomfort, trust and fear, safety and threat. It reminds us that our brains are not simple machines, but messy negotiation tables where emotions, instincts, and social signals all collide. So next time someone tries to tickle you, remember, your laughter doesn't necessarily mean you like it. It's your brain's confused way of handling a stimulus that's half game, half invasion. And maybe that's why we love and hate it at the same time. Tickling is a glitch in the system, a playful paradox that says as much about our relationships as it does about our nerves. After all, if something can make us laugh while making us miserable, isn't that the most human thing of all?